this tutorial, I'll show you how to use Boris XML Transfer to move a timeline from Final Cut Pro to After Effects. While Final Cut Pro may be a very good editing system, and a fine host for some of the effects that you need to do up front, like upresing, image stabilization, or generating a chroma key, there are some things that must be completed in a separate compositing or finishing system such as After Effects. Rotoscoping, match moving, and 3D title generation are a few examples of effects that are often quite better suited to the toolset of a 3D compositing environment, rather than an editing system which was designed to cut and sequence clips in 2D. So how do we move the timeline with live filter effects from Final Cut Pro into After Effects? Well, there are several ways to do this, including the new Boris XML Transfer filter for After Effects. In this tutorial, we'll use the Boris XML Transfer filter to import an FCP timeline into AE, maintaining all of the cuts and transitions, multicam edits, audio, nested sequences, FCP effects, and third-party filter effects, such as BCC and FEC. One of the challenges of moving any third-party effect filter from Final Cut over to After Effects is that the filter effects in Final Cut and After Effects are not identical. Final Cut uses their own proprietary FX plug architecture to host third-party filters, while AE uses the Adobe AE architecture. This is where Boris XML Transfer fits in. Because we own both sides of the effects code, we hand-carve the AE version of each translated effect to make sure it perfectly matches the FCP counterpart. So, with that, let's take a look at the Boris XML Transfer in action. Here we have several sequences in Final Cut Pro that we want to transfer to After Effects to be finished. Let's see what we have. We've got an up-res filter. We have some time remap filters here. Uh, we've even got manual keyframes on this time remap filter. You can see the splined keyframes here. We have a multicam sequence. We've got chroma key sequence here using a third-party BCC chroma key as well as Final Cut's composite mode set to screen on this clip. And here we have some transitions, BCC swish pan transition. We've got the BCC optical stabilizer, another transition here, crisscross wipe. Um, we have an L cut with audio and video here. And finally, we've got a opacity change uh, on this clip, which has been manually keyframed. Uh, for the opacity. Okay, so let's get this sequence into After Effects. What you have to do is select your sequences in your browser window and then select File, Export, XML. The default settings should be fine, so just click OK. And then just create a file name. I'm going to call this Boris XML to AE. Save. And once that's done saving, just go straight into After Effects and open it up. All right, here we are in After Effects. Let's import the XML file. So go to File, Import, and select Final Cut XML via Boris XML Transfer. Select the XML file you just created. Notice how quickly the Boris XML Transfer occurs. It just takes a few seconds. Okay, now we have all these folders here, which match up with the sequences that we created in Final Cut. I'm going to expand all these folders so you can see what's inside. Uh, we have a footage folder in each one, which is the original media that was in the sequence. And we have a composition in each one. Now, the composition is the exact match for the sequence that we had in Final Cut. So let's double click on this and check it. All right, this was the chroma key sequence. We can see here, obviously, the chroma key filter has come forward. Um, checking on the second clip here, you can see that the apply mode has come forward. It's using AE's apply mode screen, whereas before we were using Final Cut's screen apply mode. We can check the filter settings, because again, this is a live filter. It's not like a pre-comp. It's not a render. This is the filter applied to a clip. So here we have the settings and After Effects. Let's go ahead and compare those to Final Cut. You can see that they are exactly the same. So it not only looks the same, but it is the same. Now one thing that doesn't match exactly is the text. The font can't come forward. That's a limitation 
of us being a third-party plugin. So there's just no way for us to, uh, to make that happen automatically. However, it's pretty easy to change. You just tell After Effects what you know, font and justification you want, and then you move on. So let's see what the other sequences look like as compositions. Um, here we have Upres, and this has come forward. Now one of the neat things about Upres is that in Final Cut, the Upres filter requires the use of an input well. So we have a well layer in Final Cut. In After Effects, all we have to do is use a source control. But it has made that adjustment for us. So the filter comes forward as expected. Another good sequence to look at is the time remap sequence. Okay, we can see that the uh, time remap sequence is still here as a composition. We can check that the time has been changed accordingly, time reverse, negative 100. And we also had keyframes in this composition, and there they are. Also note that they are interpolated keyframes, just like they were in Final Cut. Okay, moving down the line, we have the multicam sequence, which is now a composition with all of the exact edits and timing as it had before. All of the angles match up as they did before, just as we've come to expect now, I think. Let's go into the main composition. And here you can see we had uh, some transitions. Here's the swish pan transition as it was before. Uh, we have the uh, other transitions here. We had the crisscross transition matching up. Um, we had an opacity change at the end here. This was keyframed also. There they are. There's the keyframes matching the opacity as in Final Cut. Uh, we had an L cut with the audio here. You can see that the uh, audio has maintained its correct position and length. And we also had an optical stabilizer filter applied. Now you'll see this message appear on the optical stabilizer filter. That's the filter being live, basically. Um, because this is a live filter, the optical stabilizer filter asks you to do this the first time you apply it. So it's actually a correct behavior for the filter to be doing. All right, but I'll skip to the end of this analyzing process. The analyzing is complete, and now we can see that the filter looks the same as it did in Final Cut, and the settings are also exactly the same. Okay, other things we had uh, here, if you notice that all these clips have been trimmed. In, in Final Cut, they were all trimmed clips with handles, and in After Effects, they remain trimmed clips with handles, which you can slip and slide and change around however you want. So if you still have some timing editing to do, you can still do that in the new host. So to paraphrase, the timelines match. Now before we close, there's one more thing I want to tell you about, and that's how you can get a deeper control over the media and compositions and how they appear in After Effects. So there is a user control preference panel where we can adjust many of these options. So if you go back into the file and import settings, there's an import settings tab in the import menu. So if you click on that, you can change how all these things appear in your timeline. For example, you can make the layer order appear downwards instead of upwards or you can change the colors of each of the tracks. Or if you want, you can make them all pre-compositions. So let's see how that looks. Um, it's going to import again. Let's import the same one. Now I want to point out that once you change these settings, all future imports will have these settings, unless, of course, you change them back. So now that we've got these new comps here, you can see a, a big difference in how they appear. Um, so it's all up to you what you want. It's very customizable. And if you want to go back to the defaults, there are, of course, the default settings. So there are many ways to import a timeline from Final Cut Pro into After Effects. There is only one, however, that was designed from the ground up to preserve all of the BCC and FEC filters and transitions with full precision, and that's Boris XML Transfer. If you'd like to learn more, or if you want to download a free, fully functioning trial version, visit our website at borisfx.com.